It's really coming down. It's a freak storm, I think. Oh, yeah. Water everywhere. I think what happened is I flooded my engine. And I could feel my car floating. It, it just all happened so fast. It was amazing. Oh, that's cold. The rain, the hail, the flooding, and now, <laughs> yeah, this. Well, it hailed. <laughs> Unbelievable. We've got four feet of hail blocking an intersection. This is crazy. You can't beat this. This is unbelievable. It's June for crying out loud. You know, from what I understand, the rainwater just pulled all of this uh, hail down into this little valley here. <laughs> yeah. There was a actually a, a lot of cars that were stuck in it, uh, including a, uh, a Hummer. But right now, the main focus is to get the roadways opened up. <laughs> this will take forever to clean up. I know. But it's not me. Things are ready to burn, and obviously they are burning, so we get things like this that happen. If there's any proof that nature works on her own schedule, it was here in the Poudre Canyon today. It's a pretty early start to the fire season. Without any regard to the calendar, acre after acre of brushland and ponderosa pine was converted to ash. It looks like it's really burning over the other side. Stunning onlookers, more accustomed to his spring snowfall as a weather event. It looks like it's blown over the hill. It's going to keep going if they don't stop it. So back of the sooty hand crews, the backfires, and helicopters hauling buckets of water over the flames. Firefighters like Seth Shaw expect lots of work this year. You know, unless the weather patterns change and we start getting more precipitation, it's definitely going to be a busy season. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's March. It's March! The hive wraps around a bed frame and dresser. Oh, yeah! For months, Paul Upsall and his family never even knew it was there. I came out with a can of Raid. I got about right over here, got stung on my cheek, and that was the end of that uh, idea. <laughs> Pretty scary. Upsall wants no part of the bees, but Larry Brown collects them. Okay, well, that's going to be cute. The hive will be a great addition to his bee farm in Larkspur. <laughs> But first, he has to gather it up. Simple, really. Use a vacuum to pull the bees off the honeycomb into the box. With a little luck, I won't get stung more than once or twice. And I just don't even know what they can do. The more bees Brown collects, it seems, the more he finds. I just keep wondering if I'm going to be able to find the queen. I've never seen a swarm like that. I'm surprised we can be this close, really, without getting stung. Upsall was lucky. I'm hiding. Brown's wife got stung and ran for cover. Minutes later, this reporter was stung and also ran for cover. It almost happened a third time. 40,000 bees gathered up in about two hours, and Larry Brown didn't suffer a single sting. Watch yourself. There's bees out here. Go ahead. Get away. Keep going, keep going. In Adams County with photojournalist. Keep running. Andrew Resnick, Nine News. <laughs>
can't make it change. At DIA, hundreds, maybe thousands have to deal with this delay. It's not a big deal for most. Oh, oh. <gasps> Dave! Oh, arrived. Okay. arrived! Arrived! It's arrived! Then again, most aren't waiting for the brother they've never met. I'm up here waiting patiently. Actually, not really. It's been stressful for the past hour. A brother who, wouldn't you know it, prolongs the wait. <laughs> oh. By getting lost. We're on your right side. We're two blondes. But eventually, the wait, this wait, is over. Oh, your brother's here. The brother, her brother, arrives a little late, yes. It's finally nice to meet you. Yeah, I know. But when you've been waiting your entire life... You gotta go with the flow. That's all you can do. What's an extra hour and a half? Did you have a nice flight, though? Yeah, it was nice. With photographer... <laughs> Chris Vanegan, 9 News. This is the healing field. What this field is, it's, it's basically a large field of honor to honor everybody that has uh, died in the war on terrorism. Each one of these flags is somebody's son, husband, daughter. Makes you stop and think. This tag reads in grateful memory. In grateful memory. In grateful memory of U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Larry L. Wells, age 22. You couldn't help but take time to read the names and the ages of everybody that was here. And as a uh, parent of children that are the same age, um, I feel the loss for them. In grateful memory of U.S. Second Lieutenant Jeremy L. Wolf, age 27, of the U.S. Army Specialist Douglas W. Westmantle, age 28, Lance Corporal. William J. Wizomonski, age 20. And I think it's just great to honor our dead. I mean, these people paid the ultimate sacrifice. I mean, it's the least we could do for them. This brings it home, makes us realize how lucky we are and how much we hope and pray this will soon be over. But I think that anybody that has been up here can't help but feel how powerful this is. And I don't see flags here either. I, I see soldiers standing. You see a lot of people here? <laughs> Come in and have a good time. <laughs> handball. 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 <laughs> Just a handball. <laughs> Shoot it! You just hit the ball against the wall and try to earn points. Like hitting the ball real hard. <laughs> it's a pretty good game, you know. <laughs> These are uh, pretty much ping pong um, rackets, wood rackets. What we do is we cut up the end, put some tape around it so you can squeeze your hands in. Oh. It's a good exercise. I mean, <laughs> you get tired, you sweat a lot. You can just hit it one, one after another, pop, 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 pop. It's a good um, workout, and it gets a lot of people together, you know. Oh, no, no, no. Señores, doce rayas, seis y seis. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of Mexican people that play this sport. Oh. After five days working, it's nice to come over here and have fun, you know, exercise. It's fun, yeah. To me, it is. Welcome, runners, as you make your way up the road. We're ready to go. We're looking for a good time. This is the 26th anniversary of the Georgetown to Idaho Springs Half Marathon. Running for hours at an altitude of 8,500 feet. 13 miles, all downhill. Piece of cake. Does not necessarily bring to mind a piece of cake. Runners, ready, go! Specifically, a piece of birthday cake. <laughs> which seems about as far away for some as the finish line itself. The first thing you see is the obvious. It's an older woman putting in the miles and, and trying to go the distance. Well, I was 75 in June. Wow. So I thought, 
be a good time to do something special. <laughs> special to 75 year old Betty Robinson. Oh, that's good. Includes doing what she's done before companies actually made running shoes. And you just have to keep thinking. Put one foot in front of the other and uh, keep on going. But for the Denver resident, everybody calls Robbie. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. A half marathon uh, is simple training. I've done uh, several marathons. For a life altering goal. I'm gonna kick it in here. Uh huh. Real hardcore. Yeah. Uh. I think there's just something so remarkable about a person who, for their 75th birthday, is going to celebrate by going out and running the New York Marathon. You see, the New York City Marathon represents to Robbie the dream worth training for. New York is probably going to be the highlight of my career. So here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> A group of aspiring runners. Go, Robbie, go. Turns its collective eyes to you. She motivates a lot of people. She's my inspiration, that's for sure. Take it from her daughter, Sue, who will train alongside her mom in order to run in New York. She uh, has the energy of a 18-year-old and never stops. She never stops. <laughs> <laughs> I have doubts <laughs> whether I can do a 26 mile marathon or not, but all I have to do is look at her and see the look in her eyes at the starting line and know that I can do it. If she can do it, I certainly can do it. Put the ducks. <laughs> so pretty. You're at the 10 mile mark. Got a couple more aid stations to go here for you. All right. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> the people along the race, they will be the ones to get you through. Robbie's the, the silver streak when she's out there. Robbie's not exactly tearing up the road these days, but she's certainly tearing down any stereotype anyone may have of people her age. It isn't how long you live, it's what you do with the life that you are living. Oh. Her spirit has no timeline on it. Her spirit is just as pure as she is. <sighs> All right, runners. Look up because you are here at the finish line. Thank you, thank you. Well done. Yeah, oh, thanks. Well, you just, you're just testimony to it doesn't matter what your age is, you can still participate in a great exactly. event. Exactly. Like it's, yeah. it's a training round. The part-time nurse will train full-time for her upcoming date in the Big Apple. The boots are made for walking. In Robbie's case, they're actually made for running. Getting there. One step at a time. Woo. With photojournalist Adam Schrager, Nine News. This is it. This is it. If the Patriots are suffering from pregame jitters, we're just going to go high. You wouldn't know it by talking to them. Kick some butt. The team has good reason to feel confident. They've won 13 straight. That's right, but tonight, hey, let's play our game, huh? One more, and they seal the championship. My boy's got a lot of heart and a lot of hustle, and those are the two main ingredients, so. Calling the shots in his second season, Coach Lou Villano. The closest person gets the best shot, okay? To the kids, Coach Lou is the perfect leader. He lets everyone play the game. No matter their skill. One, two, three. Patriots! What the kids don't realize Lou's real cool. is how much they're helping Coach Lou. He's a good coach. The coach is a quadriplegic. Good job, buddy. He broke his neck in a car accident when he was 18. Turn around, guys. For the next 18 years, he didn't touch a basketball. Okay. Oh! Then finally, his girlfriend, Sherry Spencer. Oh! told him there was nobody to coach her son's team. She needed his help. It's okay, Logan. It didn't take long for Coach Lou to get the feel back for the game. Hands up, Lou. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And it didn't take long for the Patriots push it, push it. to start winning. Nice. Oh, they're, they're doing a great job. They're running the ball, passing the ball, playing as a team just like we asked them to. Be there, be there, buddy, be there. 
The Patriots made good yeah. on their pregame predictions. Five, there you go. Four, yeah. Three, yeah. two, yeah. one. Yeah. Almost 20 years after a car accident took the ball out of his hands, Coach Lou finally has his championship. Good job, I'm so proud of you. A dream season, a perfect coach. Oh yeah, we won, we're undefeated. With photojournalist Andrew Resnick, Nine News. One flamingo, two flamingo. <laughs> That's a lot of flamingos, huh? Three flamingo, four. They're very noticeable. Pink, plentiful, and tacky as can be. Over there, over there, and over there. Very fun, yeah. They just make me smile when I see them. Blame this guy, 16-year-old David Wurzbacher. There was nearly 400 flamingos throughout the whole neighborhood. 397, to be exact, at 397 homes. He helped place them all. A bird-brained idea? Oh, my God! A pink prank? A flamingo faux pas? You know, when we started, we had no idea that it would turn out the way that it did. As day slowly turns to night over our flock of flamingos, Wurzbacher is aiming to prove 16-year-olds aren't always up to no good. Mission is to find the rest of the flamingos. Part one, getting them in. That took the last two weeks. Uh, here's one right here. Part two. Getting them all back to one location on a school night, no less. Tonight, all, all of those flamingos will end up in their front yard. But up to no good, Wurzbacher is not. Here we are. The target of this bird barrage. Taylor! How you doing, buddy? Will remind you of that. What do you think? You see, David did this for Taylor. Probably like 400, huh? Yeah. Is your lawn full of them? Yeah, there's lots of, of things that could separate them. But somehow, remarkably, you know, over all these years, um, they have, um, they've remained friends. Jean Atkinson is Taylor's mom. She'll tell you the two have been like this since their days in kindergarten. Close, very close. Very dedicated, committed. Um, I don't think anything can separate that. And this is where Kendall Atkinson comes in. At just 20 years of age in March of this year, she lost her battle with Fanconia anemia a rare genetic disease. It left a hole in this family. But I wasn't prepared for the loss. I, I wasn't prepared for the loss. Which brings us back to the flamingos of all things. Pink flamingos. As a teenager, Wurzbacher decided to do what many teenagers may not decide to do. Happy birthday. He put a note on each flamingo he sent out, asking for donations. It's really overwhelming, it, truly overwhelming. On this night, he got them all back and made sure they ended up in the Atkinson's yard. And in doing so, he raised an awful lot of money. We're over $11,000. All for Fanconi Anemia Research. For what David and his family have done is something that will be never be forgotten. You see, his buddy, Kendall's brother, has Fanconi Anemia as well. Isn't that cool, T? Yeah. All those flamingos for you, man. And as night slowly turns back to day, you can see just how big of a deal this really is. We've been flamingoed. Pink, plentiful, tacky they may be. But this is about more than just that. It's pretty incredible. It's pretty amazing gesture from all the neighborhood. <laughs> With photographer Chris Vanderveen, Nine News. I like the blues, y'all. Early in the morning. They not like the blues, yeah. Early, early in the morning. It's been said the blues are easy to play, but hard to feel. The man known as King James can do both. Rushing waters going down the stream. I don't know what it's supposed to mean, but I got the blues. A lifelong love of muddy waters brought King James to the riverbank. A lack of Ben Franklin's in any other bank. You know the nighttime leads him to gigs only a blues man would understand. 
I see you know the night time. Oh, I'm living the blues experience. It ain't the word. Oh, man, the blues. That's my neighbor, King James Fisher. He, he the music man. Can't you see I got some stuff on my mind? He can play it, he can sing it, he can do it all. Yeah, baby. He is cool. Yeah, I got the blues. <laughs> Day and night. Do -do 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 -do. Blues just says it straight out. Let it roll, baby. It don't take one side or the other. It just tells you straight out the truth. And I'm lonely in a big, pretty city like Denver, Colorado. <laughs> you see, as the seasons change, a pretty city reveals an ugly past for King James. Something's wrong with this picture. Pitiful, bro. <laughs> oh, man, blues. Won't you please sit down and talk to me and explain this to me? Sad, bro. This is sad. That pillow, all this, these people's clothes. This is where people live. God. Being homeless strips you of everything. I lived in this alley. Not only in this alley, a bunch of other ones around here. Street is hard, especially when you got to sleep on it. James Fisher has been clean, sober, and in low-income housing now for a couple of years. I play the blues because uh, I try to let the people know that I ain't forgotten none of my friends out here. But in here, King James can make that happen. Here it comes. One, two, three. Right now, I'm in the studio doing a brand new CD. Step a little closer, James. Is that close enough? I think he's got some talent and no one's given him a chance. Yeah, just try another pass. Except for Mario Casilio, who's producing the King James CD for free. And if I had a chance, I would do it all over again. I think God has blessed him with a big old heart. A chance, King James hopes God blesses him with a big old audience. I do it all over again. Yeah. Money from this CD will go to the Homeless Coalition, and I'm going to be trying to do my best to get somebody off this street. I don't want to live it again. I don't want to see nobody else living it. <laughs> the blues and homelessness. In many cases, it's not about choices, it's about reality. But it's Christmas time. We all should spread a little cheer. You shouldn't have to sleep in the park. You ought to have somebody in your corner. Even if it's a dog that don't bark or a blues man simply known around town as King James. Jingle Bell. Jingle Bell. And King James is on his way, yeah. Because uh, everybody's got a life and it's, this is mine. With photojournalist Adam Schrager, 9 News.